I'm sure you guys have seen a couple posts of mine in the new community tab on YouTube, but I like it a lot because it gives me a really simple way to sort of interact with my subscribers. And one of the things that I asked a couple days ago was what type of videos do you guys want to see? And one of my favorite comments on that particular status was talking about a video idea where instead of talking about cards that nobody plays, such as Magic Cylinder or Card Trader or Jar of Greed, how about I make a video where I talk about a card that everyone plays? And I know that just like in the case of cards that nobody plays, I know that you're not obligated to sort of play these cards, but I thought Twin Twisters would be a great starting point because Twin Twisters is one of the most popular cards in the entire game from the past five years. And if you don't believe me, you can check out the uh, the TSG player top 10 selling cards 2016 because Twin Twisters, I kid you not, was the best selling card of 2016. And that was back when it was only printed as a 10 to $15 super rare, which if I need to remind you, the, the fact that it was 10 to $15 is crazy because that was the first set, Breakers of Shadow, that released the new uh, rarity structure. And what that meant was that every pack included a super rare or higher, which meant that Twin Twisters wasn't that difficult to pull. It wasn't short printed or anything, and it still managed to be 10 to $15 because virtually every single person played it. And only very, very recently has it sort of fallen out of popularity. But even then, Twin Twisters, if you look on the TC Player Deck Archive, is still popping up at least once every single weekend in a topping player's deck list, either at a regional or a YCS, which I think goes to show that even in a format that's so centered around single target removal to stop field spells like Spiral Resort, um, even in those types of formats, a card like Twin Twisters can be a very popular pick, and I think that really proves that Twin Twisters is so powerful. So today's video, I'm going to tell you why everyone plays Twin Twisters because every once in a while I do get comments from people asking why people play the card because it, it doesn't really seem that much better than MST or other back row removal available. But I think a great starting point is talking about Mystical Space Typhoon itself because Mystical Space Typhoon is an incredibly old card and it basically wasn't power crept until Twin Twisters. And what I mean by that is that Mystical Space Typhoon was always the best piece of back row removal that wasn't like heavy storm or like it wasn't mass removal it's just single target back row removal it was the best one of its class forever basically until twin just came out so let's talk about all the things that sort of came out when MST was around before Twin Twisters that MST ended up being better than. The, the biggest example I think a lot of people think of is Dust Tornado because Dust Tornado actually did see a lot of play only because Mystical Space Typhoon was limited or semi-limited or whatever and people had to play something else and for a long time Dust Tornado really was the go-to second in command for destroying your opponent's back row. Now one thing I do want to mention is that Dust Tornado does in fact only destroy your opponent's back row where MST can either destroy your back row or your opponent's and that might not seem very relevant to some players but there are times when you want to destroy your own cards and Dust Tornado can't do that. Dust Tornado is also a trap card. That's pretty much the biggest downside of Dust Tornado. Because it's a trap card, you can never activate it on your, your own turn. As soon as you draw it, you have to set it and wait until your opponent's turn. And one of the things that makes MST so great, as well as Twin Twizzers, is that quick play spells are by far the most versatile card type in the entire game. You can set them like a trap card, you can activate them like a normal spell, and you can even sort of activate them not quite like an evenly matched, but I mean, you get what I'm saying, right? You can activate them straight from your hand on your own turn in, like a ch in response to a card which is something that not even a normal spell could do. Not any other type of card can actually do that besides, I guess, if Konami keeps printing cards like evenly matched. But quick play spells are incredibly good. It's really hard to sort of beat over MST in that regard. But we can even look at a card just like regular Twister, not Twin Twister, regular Twister, because regular Twister is a quick play spell card. It does have a life point cost, but it's not really high enough to even be worth mentioning. And uh, it only destroys face up cards. And this card was played in a lot of different decks before we really got to like 2012 I think is when it people stopped playing that card but Twister has seen play um, usually because even though it only hit face of cards it was faster than Dust Tornado although obviously you would never play copies of Twister before you maxed out on your copies of Mystical Space Typhoon. Next we can look at a card like Nightbeam. Nightbeam only hits face downs where, Twin Dis or where Twister only hit face up cards and Nightbeam sort of has this added benefit of your opponent can't chain the card that you target. Now that doesn't matter 
too often because your opponent can actually chain other cards and then chain the card that you targeted, but it's still sort of a neat way to sort of get through your opponent's back row and force them to react unless they want their card to be destroyed. But Nightbeam is only a normal spell card, not nearly as fast as MST. I do think if Nightbeam was a quick play spell card, it might have had the potential to actually be good, but as a normal spell card, it's just too slow. Then we can even look at a card like Galaxy Cyclone releasing Cross Souls. This is about six months before we got Breakers of Shadow. Galaxy Cyclone, even though it destroyed two cards, the price of one simply could not overshadow Mystical Space Typhoon. But then, finally, we get to Breakers of Shadow, and Twin Twister is released, and oh man, does it make a huge difference on the game. Now, one of the reasons that makes a huge difference on the game is because in the TCG, we don't have access to a lot of mass back removal. We don't have Heavy Storm. We don't have Harpy's Feather Duster. We basically just have MST for dealing with back row at the time, and Twin Twisters is just so much better. And one of the reasons that Twin Twisters is so much better is because it sort of follows the same philosophy of playing three reinforcements of the army and then one copy of three different level four warrior monsters. Now, a lot of decks did that, and the biggest one was probably Shadals, where they would play three Rota and then like Armageddon Knight and Photon Thrasher and uh, Elemental Hero Blazeman. And the idea behind that was that when you wanted to see one of those three warrior monsters, you essentially had four copies in your deck because you had the, the copy of the card itself. And then you had three copies of reinforcements of the army to draw into that card. So when you want to see it, you had four copies. But if you didn't want to see that card for any reason, like it was bad against that particular matchup, you essentially only had one copy of that card because the, the reinforcement of the army could grab the other cards in your deck, not just that one card, which meant that when you wanted to see a card, you had a really high chance of drawing it. And when you didn't want to see it, you had a pretty low chance of drawing it. Now, how does Twin Twisters relate to that? Well, Twin Twisters is sort of the same thing if we're talking about drawing Mystical Space Typhoons in your opening hand. So there will be times when you want to draw two Mystical Space Typhoon, and in that case, you can simply draw Twin Twisters because what Twin Twisters does is it turns whatever the worst card in your hand is into that second copy of Mystical Space Typhoon. However, when you don't want to have two copies of Mystical Space Typhoon, Twin Twisters only takes up one slot in your hand unlike if you drew two copies of Mystical Space Typhoon, which will always take two slots in your hand. And that might not seem very important, but when you're really building decks to maximize their overall winning potential, those small differences in the card choices do make a huge impact on the game because there will be hands where you need almost all the cards in them to actually deal with your opponent's card and they don't have any back row to destroy and you're going to be really happy that you only have one Twin Twisters in hand instead of two copies of MST. But if your opponent does happen to have a lot of back row, you can simply use Twin Twisters to, at the very least, discard the worst card in your hand and take out those back row. But in the best case scenario, you can actually discard a card that gets a benefit effect when it's sent to the graveyard, such as Toy Vendor or any of the Burning Abyss cards that can actually not only turn Twin Twisters into a two for two, discarding a card, losing Twin Twisters to destroy two back row, but also gaining a bonus effect in the graveyard, which turns it into a straight plus one, which is absolutely ridiculous but we can also look at the popularity of twin Disters in regards to when it was released because it was released in breakers of shadow as i already mentioned but that's important because in breakers of shadow pendulums were really on the rise I mean, that was when they were basically the only deck you could play and twin Disters was a great way to deal with two pendulum scales with one card and that was really valuable but also a lot of pendulum players back then were playing guiding ariande and what guiding ariande did is it could search one counter trap when it was destroyed by revealing three of them and then what a lot of pendulum players would do is they would then pendulum summon it and destroy it, destroy it a second time to get a second counter trap so a lot of the times a pendulum player going first would end his turn with two copies of like solemn strike and that was really hard to deal with in the pendulum mirror match except if you happen to have a twin Disters, because that one twin Disters could take care of both of those solemn strikes and in the pendulum matchup you could actually discard perform H damage juggler to then search perform H plush fire which was a straight plus one but also a really good swing in tempo because you got rid of both of your opponent's best counters to your pendulum summon and you got to search one of the best pendulum monsters in your entire deck so twin twisters was really expensive for a while well i say really expensive with that ten dollars i mean that's a little out of the price range of budget players but it was recently really re-released in the dinosaur structure deck which i think a lot of players really were happy about including myself i think every time i uh, invited a new player to join this game one of the things that they hated to buy 
was like high rarity expensive uh, staple cards and Twinisters I mean I don't, I don't consider super rare super high rarity but it was not just like a one dollar card and it felt like almost every deck needed to play that card and they were usually pretty reluctant to drop thirty dollars on a playset. however with that reprint it makes it a much more affordable price so I think a lot of people are really happy with that so Twinisters is played because in a lot of cases it's better than MST or it's not as bad as drawing two copies of MST and even in a pinch you can use twin dissers to destroy just one back row it is not a mandatory destroy two cards so if your opponent only has one back row and you're about to do like a huge combo or something and you need to deal with that back row first you can use your twin twisters and even though it's going to be a minus one to deal with it in that case sometimes the tempo gain is actually worth destroying your opponent's only back row like if you were about to pendulum summon five cards but you're pretty sure your opponent has a solemn warning face down you definitely want to use that twin twisters to make sure that your pendulum summon went through but anyway that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video let me know what you like about this format i think it's a little bit more entertaining to talk about the bad cards but it can be fun to look at some of the really good staple cards that Yu-Gi-Oh has to offer and i think twin Dissers was such a great starting point because the card is so good at all levels of play whether you're a casual whether you're competitive whether you're somewhere in between twin Dissers is probably going to be pretty valuable to you i will see you guys later though bye